Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, we're going to be covering interface types. We're going to be covering specifically the empty interface, how to deal with nil interfaces, type assertions, and type switches. If you haven't seen the previous episode, which is covering the basics of inter interface types, please check out the link in the description and I will talk to you in a few seconds. Let's jump into the video. So what is in an interface value? There are two values in an interface value. One of them will be the actual value and the other one will be the concrete type. So let me show you a piece of code so you can get an idea of what I'm referring to. So right here on this code on the left side of the screen, we have three types, an interface type, a string a struct or rather a struct called a string and an integer or rather a type called integer that happens to be used in the, the int type. Those two types, the string and the integer are implementing the method method and therefore are implementing the interface type that we will define above. The important thing about this, I want to call out this piece of uh, code that is printing out the, the value of, of, of the type that I'm referring to, or rather the variable, as well as the type, will print out something like this if we call those things. And what I want to refer to is that the V in the context of printf is going to be printing the value of that variable and the T uppercase will impl implement in type. And if you remember what I was saying just before is that the interface value will have two things the value and the concrete type and this is important to remember because when we're discussing about uh, assigning values to interface value variables depending on how we're defining those variables things will be uh, assigned differently and perhaps we cannot assign those values back another important thing to notice here is that i'm i'm, I'm going to really emphasize on this is that because the interface values have these two values i know i'm saying values too much times but too many times rather um it's important to notice because when we're comparing values to nil both of these things have to be nil to be considered nil the variable to be considered nil okay so keep that in mind of please it's something important that is really confusing sometimes when you're dealing with interface variables uh, and and it might be problematic depending on, on how you use interface interface variable uh, values in, in, in your code. So again, we have a value and a concrete value. So the example we had before, we had this struct type called a string and define it a value in the field called value and an exported variable, an exported field rather called that you had to happen that happened to have the value of hello world. The type in this case will be a pointer to a string that happens to belong to the main package called a string. All right. So this is the value. This is the concrete type. So, like I said before, in order for a value to be nil, all right, in order for a value of an interface value to be considered nil, both of those things have to be nil. I know I'm saying this probably four times already but this is important to notice because when you're building and comparing things and passing around interfaces if one of those interfaces was assigned to something but they didn't have a concrete type it will still be considered a non-nil value and therefore depending on the configuration or whatever logic you're, you're trying to implement you may have some errors one of the most common examples, and I will leave it a link to the concrete piece of code in the in the description, or rather the link to the piece of code in the description, is when you're dealing with errors. If you assign an error type that doesn't have to be the interface type, when you're trying to compare values, because you already pre-assign a type that happens to be implemented in the error interface, you will always return a non-nil error type. Again, I will leave the link in the description so you can check that out. It's really important to keep this in mind because it's one of those things that is really confusing. So what happens when you're calling an interface that happens to he have nil values? And I was covering this in the previous episode and you haven't seen it. Again, the link will be in the description. But I want to call out, again, two things. We have two types, one called interface that happens to be defined in interface types that implements or defines a method called method and a string type that happens to be a struct that implements the method type. So when we're calling, um, if you look at the main, the, the block of main, if you're calling 
uh, using the variable str which represent that pointed to a string if we call the method using the variable what is going to be the result of those values if you not it notice on the right side of the screen you will notice that all of them will be printing out nil this is another thing that is kind of confusing in, in compared to previous uh, or if you're familiar with a different language is that if you define a variable that is a pointer depending if if you obviously if your language pro programming languages programming language supports pointers if you in instantiate a pointer it, it it means that it's referring in the beginning if you don't initialize it it will be pointer to nil or null depending on the programming language so if you use that variable and you call a method on that variable it will literally crash in go that doesn't happen and i want to call out this line that is um uh, uh, that says syntactic sugar that has a comment on the right side uh, that's how go handles those kind of things so if you go back to the implementation of method in the string type you'll notice that even though the argument receive as the first argument in the method call it's literally sort of like a syntactic sugar implementation behind the scenes in go it's literally not it's not it's one of those confusing things in go that is not a method but rather a function that happens to be receiving the variable as a receiver as a pointer in the first argument of the list of arguments that we have so it's kind of behind the scenes is is still using functions like I mentioned in the previous episode so keep that in mind as well so if you have been using things like protocol buffers or some code generators you have been you have may have noticed already that some of them have this guard that checks if the argument which will be equivalent to s string in this case is being checked as nil first so it can actually do something with the values that you have in the method or, or the actual stroke itself now let's talk about the empty interface. So what is the empty interface? Well, the empty interface defines um, zero methods. Literally any type implements the empty interface. So it may hold any values of any type and is used by code that handles unknown types. So what are some of the examples of the empty interface? You, If you're familiar with uh, the FUMP package, you can refer to maybe a sprint, error f or print f all of them have uh, a collection of interfaces or rather arguments that happen to be using empty interfaces another popular example will be the ones defined in the encoding json package like functions like marshall on marshall and another one will be the ones defined in the database sql which will be like the value or um, this scanner that happens to be depending on the implementation they always use interface the interface type so how do you use the interface the empty interface rather well there are uh, like i said two ways to use it you can use it uh, to pass in unknown values but when you're passing in those unknown values you need to define some type assertions or some type switches that allow you to differentiate or determine what type is being received. Let me show you the code and then we can discuss even more about this. So give me a few. The link to this code will be in the description as well. So you can you can refer to it, play with it and whatnot. So we have a main.go file right here that happens to be using empty interface. And I want to show you this, like I said, any type in Go will be implementing the interface the empty interface and this is because the empty interface doesn't implement any method methods therefore any type implements the empty interface i don't want to call it uh, i mean if you want to compare it to something to a, another different a different programming language it will be sort of like at the base class or the super super class but again go is not an object oriented programming language there are no classes and the context of or inheritance doesn't exist either so it's not the same but it's sort of similar so we have the inter empty interface that is defined here we have a var variable called iface that is defined is instantiated to the integer which happens to be a custom type that refers or uses an int type from the standard library so if i run this uh you will see that 
there are a few things that I want to call out first. So we have a type assertion that the way it's being used is sort of like to cast is what is called in other different programming languages when you are trying to convert from a type to another in Go is, type, is called type assertion you are trying to convert from a type whatever into this new type that you don't know of and, and, and the way we can determine if that conversion happens of that assertion happens is by using this operator or this operator which is in, in parentheses that indicates the type I'm going to be using and the variable that I'm trying to convert to. The cool thing about this is that it allows you to indicate whether if that conversion work or not because if we, if you don't do that what is going to happen is that it's going to panic and the program will cash, crash. So if I refer again to the output you will notice that hey I'm trying to convert the value 100 um, or rather well that didn't that was not what I was trying to do so um, I'm trying to call convert integer from the value that I have or rather the interface value that I have into the integer type if that works the value of okay will be okay and therefore I can use it but if I'm trying to convert a type that is not equivalent to the type that I'm trying to use which in this case will be a string and trying to convert that into an integer it will fail because it doesn't match the types that I'm trying to use and that's why it's important to define the OK parameter so let me show you what happens when you don't use OK what is going to happen is that it will literally just crash and this is one way to handle things if that's what you're trying to do maybe you were you know failing instead of providing a way to to handle failures I mean it's up to you how you want to do it but if you notice you will see that interface conversion failed because interface is a string and not a main integer type so which is basically what we defined just here so that's important that's one of those important things that you keep in mind when trying to convert things and that's why there is another thing called type assertions that I want to show you right here that what happens here is that it tries to convert things depending on what you what you indicate into something else and you have some sort of like a switch that it does whatever you want to do and and one of the most common examples will be when you're dealing with different errors that are using the error type that is in the standard library but you want to refer to specific errors maybe you want to refer to the IO error or maybe the not found row the SQL error not error not found rows uh, which indicates there were no, no rows found for the SQL statement that you did or maybe you have your own implementation of the errors uh, or of the error type in your code or whatnot one way to refer to this will be when I run this away again and you will notice that I have a three lines that indicate hey this was an string hello and int 100 or maybe this is an unknown type called int 10 which in this case if you notice when I'm referring to the case integer I'm trying I'm converting this to the type that I, re I was referring to into the value that I want to use and then I'm printing out the value of that variable itself so like I said the use case will be when we're trying to deal with errors maybe we are trying to deal with types that are using a, probably like a generic interface type and then you want to specify and define concrete actions depending on the interface that is being implemented besides the one that was originally implemented in the beginning so you can do different actions depending on the thing like I said, common examples with the errors or maybe JSON outputs when we're having in and in, in our rendering HTTP endpoints or any JSON output rather, or maybe perhaps we're dealing with um, a conversion between JSON uh, types, those kind of things. So this is really useful when dealing with the empty interface. So let's jump into the conclusions and I will give you my final thoughts. With this video, we cover everything related to the interface types in Go how to define methods and therefore the interface types, how to use empty interfaces, how to define and implement type switches and type assertions, and how to deal with nil values when using interface types. As usual, if you have any comment or if you want me to cover a different topic related to Go, please let me know in the comments. I will talk to you next time, okay? Take care and see you later. Bye-bye.